Good evening. Welcome to the Central and Select Board meeting. Today is Monday, April, actually twenty sixth. <clears throat> And uh, on our agenda tonight, we've got our minutes. We've got, uh, we're gonna be opening the annual town meeting warrant. We've got an appointment of a couple of public wires, and then we have our usual uh, COVID budget updates and uh, regular updates. <clears throat> so without further ado, let's um, tackle the minutes from April 20th, which was last week. And we had some budget discussions and a few other things last week, mostly budget, Terry. Excuse Motion. Me. I'll second. All right. All those in favor of the minutes from April 20th? Aye. Aye. Now, I should point out, too, actually, that we do have afterwards, we have an executive session and we'll be adjourning from here, going into an executive session, and we'll come back to upward session only to adjourn. So just an FYI on that. <clears throat> All right, so our first one, Jeff, it's uh, that time of year, huh? We've got to open up our annual town meeting warrant. Yeah, we, um, I know in, in March, we talked about the schedule for the election and the um, town meeting and, and voted to postpone town meeting. And I don't think that we actually voted to open the, the warrant. So that just so that, um, People can submit articles, and um, we have been collecting them. And we've we've mentioned the deadline for submitting articles, which is next Thursday, sixth, right? Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. So, in case somebody is considering submitting one, you do have until next Thursday, May sixth, as a deadline. <clears throat> so we should probably take that official uh, act and open up the warrant, then. Eh? Motion. All right. I'll second. Have, all right. All those in favor of opening up the warrant for this year's annual town meeting? Aye. Aye. All right. Three to zero on that. So we are now officially open. <clears throat> um, anything else that you want to discuss about that at all while we're while we're on the topic at all? Or any housekeeping or anything? Or I would remind people, if I could, Mr. Chair, that hmm. in the last half in the last four years in particular we've not used the tool of a special town meeting prior to the annual town meeting to clear up uh, either open invoices or business in the current year uh, that was allowed by the administration um, to let towns take care of those kinds of business during the annual town meeting so we have had in my tenure here a short stint where we would run forward half an hour, discuss open invoices in a special town meeting format. Uh, that's no longer right. the case. One meeting this year. Yep. <clears throat> that's true. We'd, uh, we used to do that. <clears throat> All right. Uh, next up we have, oh, let me just slide down a little. We have um, an appointment of Tim Smith and Peter Kimzinski as public wares. Motion. And they're appointed by who? Hang on. All states. Appointed. Okay. Second. All states. Yep. yep. I All see right. that. I was in favor of appointing Tim Smith and Peter Kimzinski as public wares for all states. Aye. 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 All right. Three to zero on that. Ah, and I see Lori popping on there for our update and perfect timing as we just wrapped up our public wear appointments and it is now time for our COVID-19 update. How are you tonight? I'm doing well and you folks? <clears throat> All right, thanks. Good, um, our two week numbers look better than they did. We are at, I believe going to be six cases for the two week count based on the information that I have which is five less than last week. So it's fantastic. Nice. Moving in the right direction. Excellent. Definitely moving in the right direction. <clears throat> um, just a couple of quick announcements. GCC has opened a drive-through clinic. Um, the next one will be on April 29th and 30th. Um, the first drive-through clinic over two days, they did 1100 doses, which is a great thing. Um, 
And I also believe the um, John's on center will be closing as of May 15th for vaccinations. They're gonna move over to the GCC site. Okay, uh, all right, thanks. Yep. <clears throat> any, other, uh, any other updates? That's a good thing. You know, the shorter sure we is. get, that's great. All right, and I know, um, I know Tom was up there. You were at the uh, GCC site Saturday, right, Tom? Uh, Friday, Davey. Uh, Friday? Th Thursday. Thursday from 3 to 7.30. Oh, and, um, <clears throat> and, and, and hopefully, Lori, I, we, we just learned today that uh, I think South County is going to have another clinic uh, May 16th at Treehouse. Oh, great. That's, I, that's, awesome. that's hot off the press. It's not official, but uh, that's what we're <laughs> shooting for. Word on the street yeah. is. That's, that's called public leaking. Yeah, that's right. Yep. There you go. That's great. That's great. <clears throat> yeah, the, yeah, we used to do drive through flu clinics, and they, work, they tend to work out really well. So and there's a lot of space the, uh, up at the, GCC. The, the drive through at GCC worked very well. I, I mean, it was very quick. Uh, um, people got in line and we, and the, and Lori, you'd be surprised that the, uh, age of the people coming through has drastically decreased. The hair's gotten uh, a little darker. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You know, let's put it this way. The radio stations that we listen to are much different oh. than the ones I normally listen to. <laughs> That's great. Uh, there you go. Oh, that's good. You know, more more vaccinations. The keeping taking steps to get closer to back to normal. So, yep. you know, and I guess UMass has announced they're going to be going back to. Uh, I think what they worded as the full college experience uh, in the autumn. So, yep, and require there vaccinations. So, oh, there you go. Excellent. <clears throat> so that'll be good. Everybody will be back doing the Blarney blowout again, I guess, back to normal next year, right? <laughs> Let's hope that's uh, not normal. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right. Well, thanks, Laurie. Yep. Any, just um, a, any, oh, yeah. Sorry. Just a PSA. It's, it's very dry out again. So be aware of starting brush fires or, you know, disposing of ashes or cigarettes. Just please be careful. Yes, between the wind and the lack of rain, it is still pretty dry, yes. especially for this time of year. That's true. Thank you. <clears throat> and it, it was certainly windy today. So, actually, we're coming pretty much to the end of burning season, right? We've just got till uh, the last day of April. So, yep. All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Thanks. We appreciate it. Have a good week, Lori. Thank you. You too. <clears throat> um, anything on your end, Jeff, that you want to cover on COVID at all or? No, no. Um, still waiting for guidance on the latest stimulus round and more details on how those funds can be spent. Um, okay. That's about it. How's, um, how's the visiting in Town Hall been doing? As, as I sit in the, the red taped off area here, which you can't see because of my <laughs> background, but... <laughs> uh, we, we've had uh, a few folks this week for early voting, um, so huh. more than in, in the past couple of weeks. Um, but generally, I think it's been going pretty well. No, no major issues. Um, people have been respectful. There haven't been any lines or anything like that. We haven't come close to capacity, um, even the reduced capacity we're allowed. So I think it's okay. been going pretty well, pretty smoothly. Good. Excellent. Good. <clears throat> All right, that's good. All right, um, on to our budget discussion placeholder. I don't know if you wanted to cover any specific topics this week. I know we had a lot of uh, a lot of budgetary discussions last week, so <clears throat> that was uh, that was good fun. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so I, I think the the latest is um, just I um, haven't gotten a chance to update the website yet, so that's a little bit out of date, but. Today I was doing some of the work that we talked about 
last week as far as maybe moving the warrant article for the elm tree to the tree warden budget line yep. um put uh and i realized that, that there was one one insurance related expense that i put in a comment that is wasn't added um but realized that i should probably throw something in there to give a better number um yep. so that there will be slightly updated information coming out but um i think that you know the the operating budget aside from the the use of free cash and what may be left over is in pretty decent shape it, um and we tried to schedule a capital planning committee meeting for this week we weren't able to get a quorum so we're, we're looking at um i think we said may 13th which is a thursday okay. um, for the next meeting and then that'll Give additional clarity as far as uh, potentially other use of, of free cash um, to supplement some of the capital requests. Okay. All right. So we're slowly getting there, which is good. All right. So if I could, Mr. Chair, there was I questions was last ask, week. Yeah. There were questions last week about um, uh, revenues and timelines from the current year that may or may not be anticipated. Uh, any sense from the accountant or the assessors that that is uh, factual or do we just wait and see at this point? Um, as far as the uncollected taxes yeah. and um, yeah, so I believe there was about $160,000 in uncollected taxes as of July 1st, okay. um, 2020. Of that, there's about 14,000 outstanding, mm -hmm. so we collected about 146. Um, so good good progress there. And good. Then, um, yeah, I mean, it, we're not gonna know what the actual new growth from North 116 flats is until they go out and do the assessment. Assessment, right, okay. Yeah, I think that was the other major uh, thing that was mentioned last week. Yeah, those okay. are two good pieces of homework. I appreciate that. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> we'll have more, I'm sure, as we move along. So thanks. <clears throat> All right. Um, do you have any uh, select board updates? Well, we're going to go to executive session tonight, Mr. Chair, to talk about the tentative agreement on uh, the police uh, three-year contract. Uh, I think uh, Jeff and the chief did extremely good work uh, this cycle and uh, we reached a tentative agreement uh, this morning. Now that won't be announced publicly because it's a TA and the union has to ratify it and we have to go through our own uh, legal review. But the uh, negotiations again were really solid. Uh, they were, when I say solid, it sounds a little, they were very <laughs> fact-based and yep. that was very good. It's like Excellent. numbers, duration, population, kind of like an Excel discussion, not a lot of policy discussion, which I think is very, <laughs> um, for this, for this, you know, right brain, it's good. Excellent. Yep. Those are good, tangible things you can work with. So exactly. Excellent. <clears throat> All right. Thanks. Appreciate the work on that. Oh, Tom, any uh, any updates this week, Tom? Other than the this week, there all set there, Davy. All right, and I know we're trying to get a um, personnel committee meeting set up, right, Jeff? So working on that. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we've got a few issues to work on for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and then with that, I'll turn it over to you, Jeff, for any updates. Sure. So. Um... Start off by talking about North Main Street and Button Ball. Um, they're doing the uh, storm drain replacement on the east side of the street. Um, and when they approached the critical root zone of the Button Ball tree, they stopped, brought an arborist in to oversee the work, um, which they're yeah. going to 
to, you know, they've identified the trees that, that need to have an arborist on site and for Excellent. Air, air excavation, using air tools to identify the roots and um, what, whatever impacts there may be um, to, to minimize those. So um, that's, that's the latest from that. Um, and then uh, complete streets where I think either this week or next week, um, we're gonna go out for the line striping to show the contractors exactly where we want. Nice. The lines on Falls Road and the, the bicycle lanes um, and the project engineer will be back next week. So we're just trying to determine if we're going to combine those meetings because I want to do a walkthrough with her too to make sure every all the paving was done as, as planned. Um, yep. but that's, that's the latest on that. Um, and then plans for the Riverside Park. Um, I believe we're submitted to the Conservation Commission okay. and there's going to be a oh, public great. hearing uh, in May. Um, and we're awaiting comments from DEP and Natural Heritage. Um, that'll be part of that discussion as well. So once we have the go ahead from the Conservation Commission and we submit it to the park program, we have to send them the designs, they'll approve it, and then we can move forward with procurement um, and hopefully shovels in the ground um, sometime this summer. Okay, great. I noticed we had a couple of DLTA things too. Oh, yeah. great, yeah. Um, so district local technical assistance um, is provided by the FERCOG yep. and we had pro uh, prioritized uh, shared senior services, um, Sunderland, Deerfield, and Waitley. Uh, we're looking at a joint needs assessment for the senior center. So that was, uh, I think, our top priority. And our second priority was uh, updating the housing plan. And both of those were accepted. Um, okay. So we're excited that, that our top two priorities uh, will be worked on this year. Oh, that's great. All right. <clears throat> I took a little spin up Main Street last night to see see how things were going. So it's coming along, <clears throat> which is nice. <clears throat> All right, thanks. Now we've reached our public comments section of the evening. I don't know if anybody's got any public comments. I see a few folks out there. Hmm? <coughs> All right, okay. Um, we're, we're doing executive session just for um, paragraph three tonight, right? I think. Uh, it should be two. Uh, so two? No, no, not paragraph yeah. two. There should be two lines we're going in for. Should be minutes and contracts. Right, yep. okay. Seven and three. Seven and three, okay, just wanna make sure. <clears throat> All right, so at this point, um, we've got not, yes, go ahead. I, I, I just, before we go into executive session, I do wanna, recognize that it's likely Mr. Bergeron's last meeting as a select board member. And so just wanted to say thank you. Um, re really appreciate working with you over the past year and, and the leadership and didn't want, didn't want to end the open session without saying thank you. And, and um, yeah, it's, it's been great from my perspective. So I, I this is the part where you said you, you got still. me into this. <laughs> I'll tell you about that in the executive session. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so if I could, Mr. Chair, you know. Yes. Uh, along uh, those lines. Uh, it's been a... Uh, uh, 18 years of uh, learning and uh, listening. And it's been a wonderful experience working in support of uh, the community. And I'll leave it at that. All right, thank you. Yes, Peter. 
I'd just like to say that um, the town is so much better off for the work that Scott has done um, over those 18 years. And before that, I'm not sure how long the finance committee and so on. And um, he's brought to the, he's brought a lot of things of a positive nature to the way the town does business. And it seems like it's more structured in a good way and procedures and policies are more carefully thought out and planned. And, um, you know, it's not to, it's not, you know, the board, the select board is three members. And so it's always a matter of, right. of, of input from the three of you and eventual agreement from a majority of the board and so on. But um, it just has been, uh, it, it's been both to me quite amazing how much she has contributed in, in imaginative ways to make this a better town. Um, and uh, thank you, Scott. And I'm sure I, I can't, I've sat in on a lot of these meetings just because, you know, it's I, I like to you know, understand what's going on in town and, and I share the same interest in making it a better town. But boy, I've just been continually impressed more and more by by how much you've both offered of yourself and how much you've done. Um, it's been just great. And it's, boy, I'm going to miss you. Yeah. Well, I'll still be over at Amherst Road. I, I know where to come <laughs> yeah. and talk to you. So. <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to be a very big chair to fill, I think, yeah. going forward. And uh, I think it, it's it's been a really uh, example of a, of a, a, a tense and complementary collective. That's the best part of a, of a disparate board that comes together with us almost invariably in this board and members before David that has singly focused on the best interest of the town and the largest cheerleader for that is actually Tom. Yeah, that's correct. That's true. And yeah. I think I think one of the, to me, one of your biggest legacies, Scott, is a, a, a legacy of, of governance as opposed to politicking. Yep. And, and kind of like what you were talking about, Peter, which is, seems to be getting more and more rare these days, you know? I mean, it, it, just the, the, the focus on efficiency and, and improving things. And, and one of the things that, you know, we do like to hear is opposing views because nobody has all the answers. There's no party, no group of people that's got all the magic answers. And if they did, we'd have solved all our problems long ago. And sometimes you really got to listen to other things to push yourself outside and look at things from a different perspective. And I'm, I'm just going to stop there because uh, I don't want to get all, you know, too sentimental here. So yeah, we still got executive <laughs> session to deal with. I know exactly. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> so, but <clears throat> Mr. Chair, have... if I could please. Yes, one, Tom, one please. Of the, uh, one, one of the benefits of having um, a member of the board like Scott and David, um, and before him, the Tony Legers and the John Fields and, um, and, and there's other, but the, the understanding and, and that you can have differences of opinions and you can rationalize and have a conversation. And I've been asked many times, well, how come all your votes are three zero? And how come you guys always agree on everything? Yeah, we don't. And, right, and we we don't, get there. Yep. We, we don't agree on everything, but the one thing that we we have had for a long time is we have had the ability to discuss, to put our personal our personal uh, thoughts on the table, and to share those thoughts with one another. And sometimes people may not that watch a meeting or just catch parts of a meeting may not understand um, that, that sometime to have a full conversation is very important and that sometimes a chair or sometimes a member of the committee has to put out an opposing view that he or she may not agree with but is not afraid to throw out that opposing view right. for discussion. And, yep. and, that, and, and I, will, I will tell people, there's many times Scott, myself, or David 
will take a position that not necessarily is what, what our heart's telling us or our mind's telling us, but it's important and that we have a full discussion. And sometimes, and, and, some, and, and it quite often happens with budgets. It, it happens when we go into negotiations sometimes. Um, and sometimes what you see on TV or listen to at a meeting may not be um, how we necessarily feel ourselves, but it's important to have those conversations. And, and Scott, Scott knew that from the day one, which, which, is, which, is, which is made things a lot easier that there's a, the, the greatest thing about having a, a successful board of three or five or seven or 12 is a free exchange of information. And Scott has always yeah. uh, understood that and participated on both ways. And Scott leaves as a leaves the board as a friend. Thank you, Scott. Definitely. And we're gonna miss the history readings too, you know. They I appreciate well, that. When Scott first came on the board, he wasn't a friend. He was a, one of those finance committee members and board of yeah. select, <laughs> you know, select board members and finance committee. They didn't like one another in those old days, right, Peter? Oh, come on. It was all sweetness <laughs> and love. Yeah. Depending well, on which side of the fence you're on. You were always on the dark side. <laughs> yeah, you're the dark. Peter's on the dark side. Uh, I, I appreciate the, the, especially the attention to budgetary stuff too, because that's, uh, you know, a lot of people just, their eyes sort of glaze over when we get into that kind of stuff. But, you know, that's the kind of stuff that is very important. And, you know, honestly, it's the, what I call, what often people call the unexciting things that really are what make all this stuff work. So, and, uh, I have uh, enjoyed very much uh, working with you and have profound respect uh, for you, Scott. So well, thank you all. It's been an honor to serve with you. I, can I add something else? Yes, Peter. Um, I also think it needs to be, to be uh, noted that, you know, over the, a good number of years now, the select board has spent a lot of time on uh, doing the various studies and planning that were necessary in order to qualify uh, for grant assistance under different parts of state government. And you can look around and see at the things that are being done, uh, you know, or, you know, things like the, you know, we don't pay for our electricity anymore. We've got this complete streets program. We got the park improvements. We're getting Main Street redone. We're doing the, the, senior, the senior housing. Um, getting a tremendous amount of, of outside of town support for doing this. And that's just been hard work on your board and making sure that, that we qualify for all these things and um, goes back to previous town administrators too. And Jeff has kept up that uh, tradition of, of being on the ball for, for making sure that we get more resources than uh, way more resources than we would otherwise. So that's another thing that, that Scott has been also a, an instrumental part with the whole board of, of making happen. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that, Peter. I think one of the things that you kind of have to remember sometimes is to pick your head up and stop looking at your feet from where you are at the moment and look <laughs> ahead. Because a lot of the stuff is, is, like you said, is planning for the future. Maybe stuff that we may never even see come to fruition, but you got to start somewhere. Yeah. We, we just know? had that announcement tonight about the DLTA. Right, exactly. Just and, keeps just keeps, you know, it becomes a, a program of sorts. And it goes back in many ways to the decision the town made to go to a town administrator form of government so that the boards of board of selectmen could work on or the select board could work on policy. And for a short period, the board of awesome, which was my favorite board to serve on. <laughs> um, That's uh, right. Could actually work on, you know, the, the larger policy pieces and have an administrator or an administrative team and we have a great town uh, administrative team, whether it's uh, support staff or other right. members in uh, in the uh, in this building. So, but you're right, Very Peter. True. There's a lot going on there. Yep. And we got our, our FCAT guys got something to say there, huh? Yeah. yeah so I know I'm not a Sunderland resident or anything, but I am going to say I'm going to miss working with you, Scott. And I've always enjoyed our. Uh, discussion on old movies and old cartoons so thanks go. don't don't Good mess luck, up saturday please. night oh don't worry it'll get there too i have more cool stuff coming good look forward oh, to thanks it. again
Thank you. We have a small emergency survival kit that'll be on the way for you, Scott. But you know, it's, <laughs> it's not ready just yet. So, but you know, it'll be good. There you go. All right. <clears throat> Any other um, public comments at all? All right. Well, with that, hold on. I'm gonna to have to take out my glasses here to read my my small phone. I have the agenda. <laughs> I have the agenda on my phone, so I don't have to keep oh, flipping God. back and forth. <laughs> All right. So, with that, we'll be um we'll be adjourning from here to go into executive session. We'll be doing that pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Paragraph 7, to comply with or act under the authority of any general or special law or federal grant in aid requirements. And then also pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Paragraph 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. So <clears throat> with that, we'll entertain a motion to um, go into executive session. Motion. And we have I'll a second. second. I'll second right, and, well, warn, and warn the public that it really is an update on the police contract. And then prior to elections, one of our policies is to review any outstanding executive session minutes. And those, those are the only two action items. Yep, exactly. And then we'll be just coming back into open session only to adjourn. So um, roll call vote for executive session, Mr. Bergeron. Aye. And Mr. Feidenkevitz. Oh, aye. And I for Mr. Pierce. All right. And uh, thanks, folks. We'll see you next week on our next meeting, which will be Monday, May 3rd, believe it or not. We have an election so, Saturday, 8 to right. 1. That's right. Town no. Library. Perhaps not as quite as exciting as the last national election, but very important nonetheless. So hope everybody turns out. And uh, thank you. Thanks.